people come up to Timberline to embrace the natural world. They come up here to enjoy the mountains. They come up here to enjoy skiing, snowshoeing, backpacking, mountaineering. And Timberline is a national historic landmark for the people. And we're champions of preservation. It's in our ethos, it's in our DNA of what we do. So moving forward, you have to take care of how you practice preservation. We have always been good at balancing preservation and innovation, and we have been able to make both important. And you can see that in our track record going back. One thing that really struck me is that there are companies thinking about us. We're rural, we're remote, we don't have shopping malls, we don't have car parks, we don't have big EV banks. So that was a big deal to me. As far as the location for a, a charger, there are a few better places. You know, we just installed EV chargers at 6,000 feet on the side of a mountain. I mean, whether you want to charge and go ski or take a hike or ride our bike park. Just the fact that you can charge your car and go tour the lodge and have a nice bite to eat, it's going to be good. I know that it's a primary part of Timberline's business to operate responsibly and ethically and morally right. The fact that they got enough chargers to accommodate a number of people and the fact that it's sitting right in front of our parking lot means that Timberline you know, is definitely willing to put money where its mouth is. I've often told guests this area is pretty historical for the ski industry as well. I mean we were the second area to have a aerial ski lift in North America and I love going on electric journeys where we're you know going from place to place we got to stay here for three hours and go explore. So I, I mean I really do love it when old and new mesh together. There were three major things that really held me back from exploring this too far. The first one being durability. You know, at 6,000 feet, we're surrounded by big trees, and we're in a harsh environment. I didn't really believe that these things could hold up on the side of a mountain relatively close to the Pacific Ocean. So that was a big deal to me, but then also the cost. And then the third big hurdle is the red tape. I was really thinking five to 10 years. And that's where Tanner did a really good job of walking us through the incentives completely. He called me and said, hey, there's another incentive program coming out from ODOT. The fact that PEC continued to look at what was coming out, even after I was pretty close to signing, is a no-brainer. We were just like, okay, stamp it. Let's, let's do this project. Snowboarding is a passion of mine. Last year on opening day, I came to Timberline and counted multiple Teslas in the parking lot. So I thought it'd be a great idea to reach out to the resorts on Mount Hood. Our process is a little different than your typical install. We're there before, during, and after the project. We also have a dedicated incentives team that handles what incentives are on the table and how it's going to change when they need to execute the project. For Timberline, we were able to get over 80% of the total project cost covered in incentives. Here at Timberline, we installed the Flow Core Plus. Flow is a manufacturer that's based out of Canada and they run their chargers in negative 40 degrees below zero. And so it was definitely the charger to go with that is truly built to last. As someone that comes to Timberline all the time as an avid snowboarder, it was an honor to work alongside such a historic resort.